So Ethan, you know, um, we're starting to see terpenes added into everything, right? Uh, for better or for worse. Um, sometimes they're just trying to make a product taste a little bit better. Um, and sometimes they're actually adding terpenes uh, like, like, oh, we've added, you know, citrine to this product. It will make you happy, right? Um, and then, and then other folks are just straight up adding terpenes to, you know, you know, dabbable oils and things like that. So, so there's a lot of different implementations of terpenes right now. And something that people ask me all the time is at what point does a terpene become, um, effective in the human body? Um, is there a threshold point where you haven't had enough of the terpene, you haven't had enough of the terpene, and then at some point you're like, oh, this is, this is your threshold point where you get the advantages of it. And then, and then somewhere up here, suddenly now the terpene is doing less well for you, which mm -hmm. you've talked about extensively. But this area, to know when um, a terpene added to a product is actually giving me any benefit, how, how would we weigh that? Well, uh, it's difficult, but a uh, good gauge would be uh, if someone finds a chemovir for which they like the effects. Say that they're vaporizing uh, chemovir, they like it, it might be a good thing uh, to uh, extract uh, to make an edible product, uh, which would be particularly an advantage for someone who had a chronic condition where they wanted to uh, be able to dose effectively two or three times a day as opposed to many times a day if they were vaporizing. Um, part of the problem, uh, and the reason this has come about is there's been a big move, particularly in Washington State, towards concentrates. And in the state, 60% of sales now are concentrates, but um, often these are uh, have developed an imbalance. Um, some particularly uh, with the CO2 extracts to some degree as well uh, with butane extracts, which I don't particularly recommend. We're getting upwards of 70, even 90% THC to the exclusion of, of terpenes. And this is a real problem. Um, this is a situation where even an experienced cannabis user might take one hit of a concentrate and pass out from what's called orthostatic hypotension. Uh, just because it's a slow down their heart enough that they can't get blood flow to the brain and they hit the deck. Uh, so that part's dangerous, but additionally, you've lost the terpenoids because of the way that the material was concentrated um, and processed. But there are ways around this. Concentrates, rather, should be made in a way that preserves the terpenoids. There are two common ways to do this. One is with cold ethanol extraction. And this tends to get the terpenoids out at the same time as the cannabinoids and, and preserve them. So tinctures, even though they're old fashioned, remain a good way to extract and to store cannabis uh, stably. Uh, the other way uh, is with CO2 extraction, which is notorious for causing loss of terpenoids, but instead of doing one run that usually would get the cannabinoids effectively but lose a lot of the terpenoids, is to do one run aimed at extracting each and then combining them. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with this. It just takes longer, um, but uh, it would be a better way uh, to do this. In terms of the amounts, um, everything is relative. Um, there was one analysis of things that tried to demonstrate how potent terpenoids are. And it indicated that uh, a concentration of 0.1% uh, can have a measurable effect, but it really didn't say how that was administered. So if we look at how terpenoids are most effective, certainly they are on inhalation, and I think most people realize that. They're also effective when applied on the skin, and this is the ba basis of aromatherapy and massage. Um, people shouldn't think that this is witchcraft because you can produce measurable levels of the terpenoids in the serum after application on the skin. Um, they are somewhat less effective orally, uh, but that's not to say that there's no benefit uh, at all, and so people shouldn't shy away from that. Um, but um, in general, um, 
we need to see higher amounts of terpenoids in cannabis-based medicines, it would be easy to exceed the necessary concentrations if they're added from an external source. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that <clears throat> um, I think at the at the heart of this is is customer and patient education, right? Because um, the the market is providing these um, you know 70, 80 percent. THC oils because when people are going in they want the most bang for their buck and so they they look for the highest THC content not realizing that as you're increasing your THC content you're you're lessening the space available for the minor cannabinoids and the terpenes and every and and especially CBD which will help moderate and actually make your THC high more pleasurable and so um, um, you know what would what would you recommend as far as you know, trying to, uh, I don't know, backfill the market right. to, to, to perhaps, you know, reach the reach patients so that maybe the demand changes so that what's being brought to the market is changed. Sure. Well, uh, this is a problem. I've had this conversation with many bud tenders um, and uh, the average consumer goes into a, a cannabis dispensary and usually asks for the highest THC available. A good bud tender will try to disabuse them of the notion that this is what they really want um, and try to explain that the quality of their experience might be a lot better with a more balanced chemovar. Um, CBD has somewhat of a reputation as a buzz kill, uh, but this really isn't accurate either. In the olden days, um, more often cannabis had a balance between THC and CBD Um, and uh, that was still pleasurable for people in the recreational market. Um, It takes a tremendous amount of CBD usually given before THC to totally eliminate uh, its ability to produce a high. Rather what it will do when they're used in conjunction is it might blunt the peak high somewhat. It also delays the onset of the peak high um, and most importantly prolongs the overall effect uh, so that people don't need to dose as often whether they are using it recreationally or to treat a specific disorder. Uh, So there are many advantages and then again with the other terpenoids these very much modulate the high of THC, um, can reduce short-term memory impairment, can reduce anxiety and uh, all the other side effects uh, that we associate with too much THC. Uh, So uh, it really depends on what the consumer is seeking, Uh, but education can help a lot in guiding people towards what might be better uh, for their overall health and reduce problems. And so, bud tenders, it sounds like it's up to you. You're our front lines. Teach the people. (laughs) Thank you, Ethan.